before they can even speak their language, they can see the love of God in them. That's why the whole village turned to God. And many more villages turned to God. So then he told me, he said, like, when I came to Ecuador, that always in my mind. It's not about how we do things, but it's about how we love the people. And how the love of God being channeled through that. As a result of that, he has established over what, 12, 13 churches over there in many different villages out there in anywhere in, in, in Ecuador. God used it in a mighty way. And here it is. The Bible says, the scripture says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. What day of judgment is that? It's the day when the Lord Jesus Christ come to us or when we stand before Him. Do you know that religious people, people that are not Christians, religious people, they are afraid to stand before God, a holy and righteous God? Do you know that? What are you afraid of? I remember when I was younger, I used to be afraid to go to people's houses, especially when their dad have a big mustache. <laughs> and look with the door. And if they had to say, oh man, you know, <laughs> not like you, brother. <laughs> but you got a big smile, so you know, don't be afraid of them. But I used to be afraid of them. You know, when I come to the house, the first thing I ask, where's your dad? <laughs> I always ask that. Did you do that? Did you do that when you were younger? Where's your dad? I don't know, maybe it's an Asian thing, you know, it's like, where's your dad? And then it's like, oh, he's upstairs. It's like, okay, let's go to the you know, we're going to like, and then if your dad, it's like, dad is in the living room, so like, oh, it's like, okay, let's go to the back, you know, to the back, you know. We don't want to see the dad, because dad is the most fearful one. Especially if you've done something that's wrong. <laughs> you want to go away from a daddy, and then it's like, you know, go somewhere else. Think about this. God is holy. He is a righteous God. No religious man able to stand before a holy and righteous God. But they, are, they, will, they will conceal, they will be hiding behind their fears. Fear of what? Fear of judgment. Fear of condemnation. Fear of hell. Fear of this. Fear of a lot of things. And the truth is, God is not in that picture of being so fearsome and wanting to just to demolish you. That is not our God. You know what condemns us, the Bible says? Our own sin. <clears throat> when we do not believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we do not want to believe in Him, that sin condemns us. That sin that will judge us. The Lord Jesus Christ is a loving God. And He says, because as He is, so are we in this world. What does that mean? Because God is love. And God is a perfect relationship with Jesus Christ is a perfect relationship with God the Father, and so are we today. If we have a perfect relationship with God, loving God, and then there's the next part, there is no fear in love. But perfect love is a cast up fear, because fear involves torment. Let me pause there for a moment. I want you to think about this. Do you know people that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ? I bet you do. I bet you do. Do you know people that do not have the Lord Jesus Christ in their life? They live, they live in fear. They will suffer. Even though they're trying to cover it up pretty good with all kinds of stuff. They're trying to fulfill their hearts with this one thing called entertainment. Entertainment is a, it's just a, a substitute, a temporary substitute like a, like a steroid for people to get away from their fear for a moment. That's why entertainment making big money. That's why they're making movies all the time. Why? Because people are living in fear. And they love to see the movie that they can relate to in fear. But then there is a hero at the end that says, like, everything is okay. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> they love this in the movie because they live in fear. They live so much in fear. They're tormented in their hearts. When everything is dying down at night, when things are so silent before they go to bed, they're living in fear. And do you know there's no cure for them? There's no true cure for them unless if they have received that love of God in Jesus Christ. 
So my question to you is this. You have the love of God. And you know that's the cure. And the love of God that is in you will not just stay still because God in nature, by His Spirit, wants to just speak all of His love, to show that love. What do you do about that? Oh, I'm just too tired. Man, you don't know my schedule. You know? And pretty soon you find out your neighbor tomorrow is dead. And then you say, like, well, wait a minute. I had that chance. But I got so caught up in many things in my life. I was so selfish that I let my loved one, or the one next door to me, who also deserve the love, the grace of God and the love of God like I do. And I ignore the love of God that wants to work through me. And now he is dead without Christ. You know, I don't know about you, but those things sometimes really just condemning to me. The thing that if I don't share the love of God or do something in the love of God that we have, that I have. What would you think when I stand before God and God says, listen, I gave you my love. You have my love. And yet you conceal it. You hide it under the bushels. You don't do anything about it. And it was okay for you. What do you think about that? What do you think Jesus would say about that? But then it says that he who fears has not been made perfect in love. You are the channel of God's love. And the love of God will never fail us. Listen to this. Of this verse says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angel, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor no things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know what that verse really says? It's not just the love of God that I have that I receive from Him, that He loved me and He will never fail. The love of God that will be channeled through our life will also never fail. Do you know that when you, when you and me, when we Christians, when we let the Spirit of God to channel that love that God has for us to love one another, that love will never fail. And that person may be so prideful and like, you know, nah, I don't want to do it. I don't want that. I don't want that. But the truth is this, that love of God that you spoke of, the love of God that you show with your love will never fail. Until today, I've never met people. They are not so, you know, when, when they when the love of God being exposed, that they just like, you know, said, oh God, I don't like you, you know, well, that's just awful. You know, do something kind, something nice, unconditionally. It's very strange, isn't it? But you know what? People will receive it. You want to prove of that? When you go to the mall tonight, today, later, whatever, if you want to go shopping, still here, still have money. <laughs> when you go to the mall, and then the door usually is like, I mean, don't, don't do the automatic, automatic door, that's just really cheesy, okay? But those doors that you have to pull with your hand, when somebody behind you, pull that door and let that person come in first. What do you think the first reaction that people usually have? They're like, oh, you know? They're, they're surprised. They're surprised. And sometimes people just like, oh, okay. And then they walk in, and they don't even say thank you. Not because they're mean, because they don't understand that kind of kindness. Do you know that? Some people just don't know how to say thank you because they're just so astonished. There's a man like that. I mean, especially if someone looks scary, you know, looks so mean, like, you know. <laughs> but you love God and you're like, come on in, you know. <laughs> the guys are like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then he said, Jesus loves you. <laughs> I'm trying to smile. I'm trying to smile. You know? If you cannot smile, do this. You know, Bite your upper lip. <laughs> Bite your upper lip, seriously. They will, they will see like you're smiling. 
<laughs> you don't have to smile, just smile up I told that to my one of my mates when I was in Indonesia because he couldn't smile. I said, fight up with today. <laughs> okay, that looks like you smile. <laughs> Show the love of God. The love of God will compel us to love Him. And as a proof of that, when we love God, we will love one another and the love of God will be perfected in us and also in others. In conclusion of this message, I want to read you a story, a true life story of a man that you probably already know, by the name of Adonarin Judson. Adonarin Judson. He was born in Madeline, Massachusetts, August the 9th, 1788. I've taken this story from the book by Dr. John Phillips. It begins like this. To begin with, Judson was an out and out skeptic and a brilliant one at that. An admirer of Thomas Paine in the age in an age when the French and English atheists were in trend. Young Judson was shaken, however, by the terrible death of a much admired skeptical college friend. The young man died in soul agony and mortal terror of eternity, and Judson happened to be in the next room. Judson did not know the dying man next door was his admirer, agnostic friend. He just heard his screams and cries of terror and his appalling fear of death. The next morning, Judson was shaken to discover the identity of a wretched man next door. Soon after, Judson was saved and his life transformed. Now watch this. Not long after that, many years from that, after he got married, he went, he and his wife went to Burma, what is known now as Myanmar, arrived in Ragoon, this, the town called Ragoon, in July 1813. The couple lived in a primitive hut on a swamp just outside the town. It was a dreadful spot, the hounds of the wild beasts, a place where the city filth was dumped and where the dead was buried, were buried. They were not wanted and their gospel was not wanted. They suffer appalling provision of poverty and persecutions. On one occasion, listen to this, Judson, reduced to a skeleton, was driven across the desert, his back bleeding from the lash, his feet burned and blistered by the scorching sand. On another occasion, he was imprisoned, and for two long years, he was locked in a foul cell and tormented by a very cruelty that could suggest itself to his brutal guards. In the meantime, his wife was left destitute, the house stripped of all its furniture. His oldest girl came down with a smallpox and his youngest child were threatened with starvation. Then a sentence of death was passed upon the missionary. The day was set. The hour drew near. But then Judson was smuggled away and his wife, now completely abandoned, and she had no idea where he was or if he was still alive. She herself was scared and maimed, a living skeleton, shorn of her hair or shape of her hair, and dressed in rags. Eventually, Judson buried his wife and all his children in that heathen land. But souls were saved. Judson lived long enough to greet his first convert, establish a church, see it grow for a hundred members, and to translate the whole Bible into Burmese language. Then after 30 years, he took his first furlough, went back to America. When then was, the question is, what then was Ed American Judson's text? What was that, what was, what was it that took him to Burma and kept him there? It was this, this is the writing of Ed American Judson. To know the love of Christ, 
which passeth knowledge. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. The phrase, the love of Christ, was often on his lips, and show ever and always in his letters. He wrote this very often in his letters. Think much on the love of Christ. He urged his converts. He died with the words, the words on his lips, the love of Christ. The love of Christ. You know, I was reading a little bit of fact about Hunter and Dodson a little bit more. Until today, his translation is the only translation that is allowed in that country, even by a hidden, by a, by a pagan kings that do not believe in Jesus Christ today is still allowing that translation to be made of. <coughs> there are hundreds of churches in there with the name of Judson, Edenar and Judson. What kept him there? What made him and his wife leave America to travel all the way there? There was no airplane back then. There was only just ship that will take you probably months to get there to Burma from America. And for his wife to suffer, his children to suffer starvation, and for them to die. For him to be in prison, being persecuted, being dragged in the desert, being whipped on his back. And he stayed there and remained there until he was able to shake the first convert that came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. What kept him there? It's one thing. Love. The love of God. The love of God. You know, when I read that story, it convicted me. It convicted me of how, how much do I really love God? You know, I examined myself, even last night, you know, every, every Saturday night, I like to pray and spend time down just to say, God, you know, what is it more that you want me to know, that you want me to speak of? And last night, even, he convicted me of that. How much do you love me? How much do you really love God? Because the love of God can only be perfected in us when we love God and love one another. 